Hey there, it's Louie, and in this Amy Groomy crochet pattern, we're going to be crocheting a Malayan taper. The taper is known for its unique features, as well as being one of the most prehistoric animals on Earth. Taper fossils show how little these creatures have changed over 20 million years and are a piece of living history. They're also talented swimmers, and similar to the pangolin here, have prehensile snouts that allow them their nose to grab and hold onto things like fruit. This pattern is not originally designed by me, but by another Amy Groomy artist, Carrie Lou Flowers, aka Ohana Crafts. Malayan tapers and tapers in general face extinction as their habitats are destroyed in large scale deforestation. Every year their population decreases, which make these uh, tapers a great part of our collaboration project. This is a huge collaboration project that me and four other Amy Groomies artists are doing to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund, a nonprofit that's mission is to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to diversity of life on Earth. Each designer made a different Amy Gurumi pattern for an endangered creature, which you can see on screen now. These patterns are all donate to download. By donating using the link on screen now or in the description below, you can get all of these patterns in this collection, each of which include a full video tutorial, just like this one, and an interactive PDF with check marks to keep track of progress and time codes to go along with the video tutorial. 100% of the proceeds for digital downloads will be donated to the World Wildlife Fund indefinitely. So even if you're seeing this pattern years later, you can still support the cause. You can learn more about how to support and find all the patterns and designers in this year's collection and previous years at clubcrochet.com slash earthday. And I'll be releasing a new video tutorial for each of these patterns every Friday over the next five weeks, as well as doing a live stream fundraiser the Sunday after the pattern goes live. So make sure to like this video down below and subscribe so you don't miss out or donate to access the videos early and download the PDF versions of the patterns. Finally, please, please share your finished designs with, uh, finished tapers rather, with me and at Ahana Crafts by following and tagging us on social media and using the hashtag crochet for Earth Day. And make sure to check out all the other designer social accounts too. They're all incredible artists that you definitely should be following if you're not already. Oh, and heads up, there is a left-handed version of this video available that you can find in the description as well. And we're working on a Spanish language PDF for each of these patterns too, which should be available very, very soon. Also, you can quickly jump around in this video by using the time codes in the description below or by using the bar at the bottom of this video. All right, well, I think that's just about it. Let's move on and talk about the materials that you're going to need to make this pattern. For this pattern, you'll need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. That's my preferred type of yarn to use for Amy Groomy, but you can use any kind of yarn that you see fit for this pattern. Um, for this pattern, you're going to need the colors black, white, and pink for the tongue. I'm gonna to be using an off-white or ecru for the white instead of just like a bright white. You'll also need a crochet hook, of course. Because I'm using worsted weight yarn, I'm gonna be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. Use whatever size hook works with whatever yarn you're using. So if you're using a bulkier yarn, use a little bit bigger of a crochet hook. And the opposite's true if you wanna use smaller yarn and make like an embroidery thread taper. Besides the yarn, you'll also need a pair of scissors, of course, for cutting ends. A darning needle for sewing in the ends. Um, I like using a crimped end darning needle like this. It helps you get in and out of stitches a little bit easier. You'll need some safety eyes. Um, I'm going to be using 8 millimeter safety eyes for this video. Uh, if you would like to get a bottle of eyes like this, we have them for sale in our shop. In addition to the safety eyes, you can use some white felt to add white around the outside of the eyes. I'll be showing you how to do that later in this video. But you can also use your white yarn to add white around the outside of the eyes as well. Um, I'll show you both techniques in this video. You'll of course need a little bit of stuffing in addition to all that. And uh, yeah, I think that's just about it. If you'd like to get a kit with all the materials that you see here, uh, the same materials that we're gonna be using in this video, um, you can find them in the description down below. And a portion of, your pro of the proceeds from those kits actually go to the World Wildlife Fund to help uh, protect endangered wildlife like the Malayan taper. All right, well, without further ado, let's get hooking. We're gonna start by crocheting the ears. Okay, so we're gonna start by using our black yarn here and we're gonna start by making the ears. And to get started, we're gonna be using the magic loop method. And we'll be using this actually quite a lot in this pattern. 
Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of how to do the magic loop, my favorite way to do the magic loop right now. However, if you're looking for a more in-depth tutorial, I'll put links right here and in the description for a more in-depth tutorial where I show a few different kinds of magic loops and my favorite one and why that is the case. But for a quick rundown, hold the yarn down with your middle finger and thumb like so, and then hold the yarn in your ring and pinky finger in like that. Go around your index and middle finger simultaneously, like so, and then back around it again to create an X on the front and two parallel lines on the back. Then take this end, place it in between the ring and pinky finger, and close your hand a little bit. Now take your crochet hook and face the yarn with your palm, or the back of your hand facing you so that the two parallel line lines are facing you. Take your crochet hook, go under the first bar of, of the parallel lines, and then yarn over with the second end, and pull that under the first. And then twist it around like that, and create a loop. Now going over that first bar, yarn over with the second one. I like to use my finger to help guide the yarn over my crochet hook. And once I have it on my crochet hook, we want to pull it through the loop that you made. The easiest way to pull that through is to really scoop it in like that and that way you'll make sure that you don't pull through any unnecessary threads that's going to be a chain stitch and now we can pull it off of your fingers it should stay together now and now when we pull this tail end it'll tighten our magic loop up a bit okay so for the ears we're going to be working all of our first stitches into this magic loop we're going to work all of our stitches in that and then we're going to pull this tail end and it'll pull our magic loop nice and tight for the ears, we're going to do six single crochets into the center of our magic loop. For a single crochet, you're going to take your crochet hook and go into the stitch. In our case, we're going to be working directly into the center of the loop. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the loop. Yarn over with the end attached to the ball, which I have in my non-dominant hand here, and pull it through the stitch, in our case, the loop. Now going over the stitch, yarn over again with the end attached to the ball, and pull it through the two loops on the hook. I really like to scoop it in like that to help me get through all the stitches, just like how we did the chain in the magic loop. All right, and that's gonna be a single crochet. We're going to be using these stitches a lot in this pattern. In fact, that's pretty much the main stitch that we're gonna be using for this entire pattern. Let's do it again. We wanna do six of those magic loops into this, or six of those single crochets into this magic loop. So let's go back into the magic loop Yarn over with the end attached to the ball, pull it under the stitch, then going over the stitch, yarn over with the end again, and pull it through the two loops on the hook, like so. There's two. Let's do another one into the stitch, yarn over and pull it under, over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two. One and two. There's three. If you look at the top here, you can see these little Vs. That's a great way to count your stitches. One, two, three. We want three more of those into the stitch, yarn over and pull it through, over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two. There's four, into the stitch, yarn over and pull it through, over, pull through two, there's your fifth. And then for our final one, yarn over, into the stitch, pull through, going over, yarn over, and pull through two. All right. That's gonna be six single crochets into the magic loop. To finish this up, we can chain one, yarn over and pull through the loop, the only loop on the hook, like that. Take this tail end and pull it nice and tight and it's gonna close this hole up. And then we can cut the yarn. You can leave a somewhat long end. We just need this so that we can sew it onto the, um, the body of our, of our taper. But once you've cut it, you can pull it all the way through after making that chain stitch and just pull it tight. And that's going to be our little ear. You want to make two of these ears. And then, uh, yeah, that's all you need to do for the ears. Okay, now let's work. Uh, now let's move on to the front legs. For the front legs, we're going to be using our black yarn again. And we're actually going to start the exact same way as we did with the ear. It's going to start with a magic loop, just like how we just did. So I'm just going to go through the magic loop really quick since I already showed you how. 
And for round one of the legs, we're going to do six single crochets into the magic loop, just like, oh, actually, I'm sorry, we're gonna do seven single crochets into the magic loop. So we'll do one additional single crochet into this magic loop. So again, we're going in, yarning over, pull through, then going over, yarn over again, and pull through two for a single crochet. And we wanna do seven of those. So there's one, going over, yarn over, pull through two, there's two, three, four, five, There's six, and then one more, because we want seven of them. And there is our seventh single crochet, and that will be the end of round one. Now, if you'd like to count your stitches again, look at the loop uh, coming out of the last one there. We'll pull it out a little bit there so you can see where, where we're looking at. And then starting with where that loop is being pulled out, look at the V. See right there? That's going to be one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven single crochets into our magic loop. Now you can take this tail end and pull it nice and tight. Uh, sometimes I like to grip right at the, where the tail end is coming out and then pull. Kind of helps you get that through a little bit easier. Okay, before I continue, I want to use a second strand of yarn to keep track of where the ends of my rounds are. So I'm going to take a little bit of yarn in an alternate color that I, that will stand out a little bit. I'm going to thread it onto a needle and I'm going to go straight through the very center of our magic loop. Okay. Let's get our crochet hook back in there. And now I'm going to take this purple yarn and I'm going to fold it over the end of the round like that. And I'm just going to keep it held down with the index finger of my dominant hand like so, and then just ignore it. So I'm just going to crochet around it, and that's going to keep track of where the end of the row or end of each of the rounds are. We're going to do that for every round. We're going to switch and keep pulling yarn through the end round. Okay, now we can pull this tighter. All right, so for rounds two, three, and four, that's three rounds in a row. Round two, three, and four. We just want a single crochet into every stitch around that you made in round one. This pattern is going to be worked in the round without turning, which means that we're just going to keep working in a spiral over and over going around and around for our stitches, which will make our ends go get longer and longer. So we're gonna start in our first stitch that we made. That's gonna be right here. And when we work into our stitches, you really wanna make sure that you work under both of these loops at the exact same time. You don't wanna work only in the back loop, that's gonna be this one here, or only in the front loop, that's gonna be that stitch there, because it will just make your pattern look different than is meant to be. Instead, we're gonna work under both loops like that. You can see how there's two loops on top of my needle there. Okay, so we're gonna go into that stitch, take your crochet hook, go under both of those loops at the same time. And then we wanna take our tail end. This is just gonna be the tail end of the piece. We wanna work around this for our first stitch just so it locks into place and we don't have to worry about our piece coming undone. So we're just gonna place that over our crochet hook and then using the end attached to the ball, we wanna yarn over onto our hook, pinch our, our piece, and then pull that loop through the stitch. The easiest way is to really scoop it under. Now going over the stitch, yarn over at the end attached to the ball again, and pull it through the two loops on the hook, one and two. And there's our first single crochet of round two. Now we're gonna go into the next stitch over, this right here is where we just worked into, but now we want to work into right here, which is the next stitch. Again, make sure that you work under both loops as you do that. So we're going to go into this next stitch here, under both loops, yarn over at the end attached to the ball again, pull it through the stitch. Notice how I'm still working around this tail end for this next stitch. This is the last stitch that we need to do this for. Then going over the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through the two loops on the hook for our second single crochet. Now we'll take this tail end, hold it, or throw it off to the side, let it float there. We're gonna use this to sew onto the body eventually, so we don't wanna cut it. All right, so we got one, two. We're gonna keep going around. Next stitch, this is the stitch we just worked into right here. 
We want to work into the next one, which is right here. Go under both loops, yarn over and pull through, going over, yarn over and pull through two. There's three. Next stitch will be right here. Go into both loops, yarn over and pull through the stitch, then going over, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, just a few more. Going over the stitch, or into the stitch rather, under both loops, yarn over and pull through, then going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two. All right, just two more here. Next stitch, pull through, over, pull through two. Last stitch is gonna be right here. Yarn over and pull through, then going over it, yarn over and pull through two. All right, so that's gonna be the end of round two. Now don't forget rounds two, three, and four. So three rounds are just gonna be what we just did there. So there's our first round of three done. Now we need to do two more rounds, just doing single crochets all the way around. I'm gonna take my yarn and my, my stitch marker yarn and fold it over my piece so that I can keep track of where the end is. I'm actually gonna pull it out a little bit more so that other end is not, is like barely sticking in. Just fold it over and just ignore it completely. And then we're gonna work into the next stitch here. We're on round three now, and we can just keep doing single crochets around. And I'm just gonna keep going around. So one, there should be seven per round. Two. Three. Four. Here's the next stitch. I'm going just quicker now since I already showed you how to do all those single crochets. Five, here's six, and then one more right here will be our seventh. That's gonna be the end of round three. Fold our stitch marker over and continue on to round four. This is gonna be our last round for our front legs. We're gonna do it one more time, just single crochet into every stitch all the way around. If you haven't yet, please consider liking and subscribing down below. It really does help this channel out a lot and uh, just would be cool to do. So please like the video and share it with any kind of uh, crochet groups. Share this pattern with any kind of crochet groups that you are part of online. Help spread the word of Club Crochet and, of course, this fundraiser. All right, just a few more stitches here. It's going to be our sixth single crochet. One more is going to be right here. I can tell because there's our stitch marker. And here we go. That's going to be seven single crochets in the end of round four. To finish the front legs up, all you need to do is go into the next stitch right here and do a slip stitch. For a slip stitch, we yarn over just like a single crochet and pull it through that stitch and then take that same loop that you just pulled through and pull that through the other loop on the hook, just like that. It's kind of like half of a single crochet. We're gonna use that to help sew on to the end at the very end of our piece when we need to sew our legs onto the body. Now we can cut the yarn. You want a somewhat long end, you just want it long enough so that it's easy to sew it onto the body. So I went about that long, that's about maybe half of a foot. And then you could just pull it all the way through your piece, just like that. Now the last thing I wanna do is just take my stitch marker here and pull our stitch marker out so that it's not still just sitting there. We'll use it again in just a bit. All right, so you wanna make sure that you make two of these front legs and really put them to the side and make sure that you know which ones are the fronts and which ones are the backs because they're going to look very similar to each other. Speaking of, let's make the back loop, or I mean the back leg now. Okay, so the back legs are gonna be made very, very similarly to the front legs, except instead of seven single crochets, we're gonna do eight, and we're only gonna do two rounds of single crochets after doing our first round, instead of doing three like we did for our front legs. So we're gonna start by doing a magic loop. I'm just gonna go ahead and get it started really fast. There we go. And for round one of our back legs, we want to single crochet eight times into the magic loop. So one additional single crochet uh, than the front legs were. So we're doing eight. So we're gonna go into the center, pull through, over, pull through two. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that really quick. We got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, and eight. It's gonna be our eight single crochets made for round one. Now before I even pull it, our piece closed, I'm gonna skip a step and just place our stitch marker right in between that magic loop before I pull it tight so I don't need to sew it in there. And then I'm gonna pull this end nice and tight and it'll close that hole up and keep our stitch marker in place. I'm gonna fold my stitch marker over like that and hold it down with our index finger of our dominant hand. And here we go. All right, for round two and three of our back legs, two rounds in a row, we just need to do a single crochet into each stitch, just like how we did our front legs, pretty easy. We're just going to find our first stitch that we made right here. If you need to count backwards, there should be eight stitches in this uh, magic loop. So if you want to count back from where our loop's coming out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to be right here. Make sure that you work under both loops of that stitch and place your tail end over it. We're going to work around the tail end for the first two stitches of our back legs in round two. So we're just going to pull through that stitch, then go over the stitch and pull through two for our single crochet. There's our first one. We're gonna go into the next stitch here and do our second single crochet. Now that we worked around two of the stitches or worked around this tail for two stitches, we can place it to the side and just keep going around. We're just gonna keep doing single crochets all the way till we get to the end of the round. Again, there should be eight single crochets per round. There's just a few more now. I think that's our sixth, seven, and eight. We can fold our piece inwards like that. Take our stitch marker, pull it up like so. And now we are on to round three of our back legs, which is gonna be the last round of our back legs. Same thing as round two, we just need to work around and just do a single crochet into every stitch around. That's eight stitches total for round three. It's one, two, three, four, there's five, six, there's seven, and then one last one right here will be our eighth single crochet. The final thing that we want to do for our back legs is the same thing that we the last thing that we did for our front legs, we want to go into the next stitch over right here. Make sure you're under both loops. Yarn over and do a slip stitch. We're going to pull that loop through the stitch and then through the loop on the hook like that. That's going to create a little slip stitch. Make it easy for us to sew it onto the body later. You just want to cut the end, leaving about as long as you did for the front legs and just pull it all the way through. And then to finish it up, we'll just take our tail, our, our stitch marker and just pull that out. We'll use this again when it comes to the body. Okay, that's gonna be the back leg. You, you wanna make two of these back legs just like you did for the front legs. And again, try to make sure that this back leg, <laughs> it's kind of funny that it's on little finger there. It's like a little, my finger's got a little beanie on. <laughs> Once you uh, finish this, make sure to keep track of which ones are your fronts and backs because they look pretty similarly. The fronts are a little taller than the backs, and the backs are a little thicker than the fronts. Okay. Now that we have our legs done and our ears done, the next thing we want to do is make the tongue. The tongue's actually pretty easy. You just need a little bit of your pink yarn for this. And we're going to start by making a slip knot. We're not going to do a magic loop for this. For a slip knot, we want to take your yarn, hold a with your dominant hand, the tail end, and then fold it over itself like this to make a loop. Pinch the loop at the connection right here and fold that loop over the end attached to the ball like so. And then going into the loop, you grab onto the yarn attached to the end of the ball and pinch the tail end with your non-dominant hand and pull that through like that. It basically creates a little a little loop there. This thing's called a slip knot. And now we can take your crochet hook, place it into that slip knot, 
And when you pull this tail or the end attached to the ball, it should pull your slip knot nice and tight around the crochet hook. Try not to keep it too tight around the crochet hook or it'll become really difficult to work with, um, but you also don't want it too loose at the same time. Okay, so for the tongue, we're going to take our yarn and do, uh, we wanna chain three times. So we wanna take this tail end or the end attached to the ball, yarn over onto the hook, and then pull it through the loop on the hook for a chain. That's gonna be one, two, and three. Now we want to uh, skip two of these chains and half double crochet into the back loop of the third chain. You don't really need to work into the back loop, but I really like to work into the back loop. What does that mean though? Well, first, let me show where you're gonna be putting this stitch. If you look at your chain stitches, you're gonna see that they're split into three different sections. This here, right there, is gonna be the top loop. The one under it right here, that's gonna be the bottom loop. And then if you turn the stitch around, you'll see these little spines of stitches. Those are gonna be the back loops. The stitch that you wanna work into is the first back loop that you made, which is gonna be right here, the one closest to the knot. Into that back loop, we wanna do a stitch called the half double crochet, which I'm gonna show you right now. Um, this is going to be, I believe, the only instance of using the half double crochet. So we're gonna take your crochet hook, Go into the stitch, yarn over onto the hook, and then insert the hook into that back loop, which is gonna be this bottom one right here. If you have, have a hard time getting into that stitch, use your nail of your dominant hand to help pry the hook into that back loop. And then we wanna yarn over once you're into the stitch, pull it through the loop, the stitch rather, and then yarn over again and pull through all three of the loops that are on the hook. One, two, three. The best way to do that, scoop it like that. There we go. And now the last thing you wanna do is yarn over and make one more chain, pull it through the loop on the hook, and then we can cut the yarn. You don't need a very long end at all for the, for the tongue. That's gonna to be more than we'll need realistically. And we can just pull it all the way through like that and it'll create a little knot on the end. And then we can sew this into the mouth later on. Now there is an alternate way that you can make the tongue if you don't want to do, uh, you don't want to actively crochet the tongue like this. The other method that you can use, which Ohana Crafts uses in her pattern, is by just making a small tongue, a uh, small like half circle that you cut out of white felt and then glue on with hot glue. It's, it's pretty easy, it's like an easy secondary method. However, I usually like to sew my tongues in just in case like they get pulled off or something. And also I don't really like using glue if I can avoid it just because I usually don't have glue to use. But that is an alternate method if you'd like to use that instead. She uses fabric glue or hot glue to glue a little piece of felt tongue instead. Okay, so now we have all the different pieces of our body done. Next up, we want to actually crochet this body itself. Once we have our body made, we can then sew on all the body pieces, and then uh, we'll be done. All right, well, let's start crocheting the body itself. Okay, so for the body, we're going to start with our black yarn, and we're going to do another magic loop. In fact, the first part of our body, the first round of our body, is gonna be made exactly the same as the ear. So we're gonna do a magic loop just like so. I'm gonna just make it really quick. And then for round one, we wanna do six single crochets into the magic loop, exactly the same as how we made the ears. So we're gonna go into the magic loop, pull through, pull through two. There's one, two, three, four, there's five, and six. Six single crochets into the magic loop. Again, if you count the Vs along the top, along the edge of this, the pattern, you'll see you should be able to count six stitches. Before I pull our magic loop tight, let's grab our purple yarn again. Where'd I put it? Oh, there it is. Let's take this. And we're gonna, we'll just go straight through the center. Like that. Save us a little bit, just like a, a tinge of time. 
and then take your tail end and just pull it all the way to tighten it around. Okay, and now we can take this stitch marker, fold it over, and keep track of where the ends of our rounds are. Okay, and that'll be the end of round one. For round two, we're gonna work into the stitches all the way around. Again, we're working in a spiral without turning, just gonna keep going in a spiral, just like how we did for the legs. However, this time for round two, we wanna do an increase into each stitch all the way around. For an increased stitch, we're going to do two single crochets into each one of the stitches. That's what an increase means. It just means two single crochets into one stitch. So we're gonna find our first stitch, that's gonna be right here, make sure our crochet hooks under both of those loops of our first stitch. See how I kind of wiggled my crochet hook in? That's because your first stitch is probably gonna be the hardest one to work into. Once you get your crochet hook in there, I wanna take my tail end and place it over so that we lock our tail end in place by crocheting around it for a few stitches, just like how we did with the legs. And then we wanna do an increase into that stitch. For an increase, we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna do a single crochet. So do first do one single crochet into that stitch just like that. Now we want to do another single crochet into the exact same stitch that you just worked into. You see how this has a little V right there? If you follow that V like it's an arrow and point straight down into the stitch, that's going to be the exact same stitch that you just worked into. So for an increase, we want to work our second stitch into the same exact stitch right here and do a second single crochet for our first increase. So there's one increase made. We want to do an increase into every single one of these stitches. That's going to be six increases total, which means it's going to be 12 single crochets total because each increase is two single crochets. So let's go into the next stitch. That's going to be right here. Make sure you're working under both of those loops. I'm also going to work around this tail end and we're going to do our second increase. Pull a stitch through, our loop through, going over the stitch, pull through two. There's our first single crochet of our second increase. Now let's do another one. You can see where it's kind of opened up right there. Go into the same stitch, yarn over and pull it through that stitch, then going over, yarn over and pull through two. That's gonna be your second increase and your fourth single crochet made. Now I can take our tail end, just fold it over to the side. We don't need it, we can just ignore it. And then we'll just keep increasing around. So next stitch is gonna be right here. Do two single crochets into that next stitch also. So there's one into the same stitch, two. Let's keep going. Next stitch is here. One, into the same stitch, two. Okay, two more stitches to work into, meaning there's gonna be two single crochets into both of these stitches. So then here's the next one. This is gonna be our fifth increase. There's one and two, which means it's our 10th stitch. And then our last one's gonna be right here. Two single crochets into that last stitch. One and two. All right, that's gonna be the end of round two. You should have 12 stitches around now if you wanna count the Vs at the edge of your pattern. All right, now we can take our stitch marker and fold it up. We can also cut our tail end. We don't need this tail end at all. In fact, what I really like to do is I like to cut it nice and close like so and then take this and save it to the side. We can use this to stuff into our piece later. That way we have as little amount of waste as possible. Okay, fold our stitch marker over and let's continue on. We're in round three now. For round three, we're gonna do a single crochet into your first stitch and then we're gonna do an increase stitch into the next stitch after that. And then we're gonna repeat that process of doing one single crochet and then one increase six times all the way around the end of the edge of the pieces. That's gonna increase you up from 12 stitches, which is what you should have currently, to 18, which is what you'll have at the end of round three. So that means you're gonna do a single crochet into the next stitch right here. This is your first repeat, single crochet one, and then increase one into the stitch after. Here's our second stitch two single crochets into that next stitch. One and two. So that's the repeat. Single crochet one, increase one. Six times total. Let's do our second repeat. Single crochet one and then increase. Remember, an increase means two single crochets into the same stitch. 
There's our second repeat done. Let's do our third, single crochet one, increase one, one and two for our increase. Keep going, single crochet one, and then increase one. If you're a more experienced crocheter and you're like, oh my gosh, he's going so slow. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to make this video uh, built for more beginners just in case there's a beginner coming into this video and this is the first pattern that they've ever made. We're gonna keep doing that repeat. One single crochet and then an increase. One and two. And then our last repeat, single crochet one and then increase one. One and two. There we go. Now you should have 18 stitches around and that's gonna be the end of round three. We're gonna pull our stitch marker up and fold it over again and continue on to round four. For round four, it's gonna be very similar to round three, except instead of doing one single crochet before you do an increase, you're gonna do two single crochets between increases. That means we'll do two single crochets, okay, one into the next into each of the next two stitches. So there's one single crochet and then one into the next stitch. That's gonna be two single crochets and then an increase into the third stitch right here. Two in the same stitch for our third single, or for our third stitch, just like that. So two single crochets and then an increase. We wanna repeat that process six times total. So that was our first repeat. Let's do our second repeat. That's two single crochets, one, and two, and then an increase after that right here. Three and four. Three and four were in the same stitch. Let's do our third repeat. One, two, and then three and four for our increase. And you can see how I'm starting to speed up, speed it up now. One, two, and then three, and four. One, two, and then three, and then that one into the same stitch, four. And this should bring you up from 18 stitches to 24 stitches. So by the end of this round, which is gonna be this last stitch here, should be an increased stitch to finish it up. That's gonna bring you up to 24 stitches around. So you should have 24 if you wanna count around. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round four. Now we're on to round five. Round five, six, and seven. Three rounds in a row, five, six, seven, all gonna be single crochets all the way around. So you just need to do one single crochet into every stitch around, 24 stitches per round. That's it, it's actually really easy. In fact, the next, all the way into round 17 is gonna be all single crochets. However, we are gonna change colors after round seven, and then again after round 12. So for the next three rounds, rounds five, six, and seven, we're just gonna do single crochets around. So I'll just get that started. And hey, if you haven't yet, please consider liking and subscribing to the Club Crochet channel. I'd really appreciate it. Um, we do a lot of patterns like this. We do live crochet alongs every week where you can crochet something from our vast library that we're consistently adding to um, every single week on Sundays at 1 p.m. So make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you don't miss it when we come out with new patterns. And then obviously make sure to like the video. Um, liking the video helps it get in front of more people and helps YouTube know what videos to show people. So liking really does help the video and it helps me know what kind of content to continuously make. So please like and subscribe down below if you haven't already. Also, well, let me finish this round. One, two, and three. That's gonna be the end of round five. I'll pull my stitch marker up. We wanna do two more rounds of that. So this is round six. Also, if you haven't yet, please uh, follow um, Club Crochet and our designer of for today's pattern, Ohana Crafts. Um, they are on Instagram and they make some really crazy looking crochet. It's awesome. They are very talented, cro uh, a ve very talented crocheter. Um, they do some really cool ones where they'll do like uh, weird 
uh, characters from different kinds of anime and a lot of Pokemon and stuff. Um, and they'll do Pokemon in different colors and stuff. They they're very good at improvising their crochet. It's it's very impressive. It's cool to see. Um, but yeah, go check out Ohana Crafts if you haven't already. They're on Instagram. I believe they're on uh, Pinterest and Facebook and Twitter as well. Uh, if you check out our page for all of these, uh, for all of our endangered creatures, uh, you should find links for all of the, the designers' Instagrams there. Or all of their social media there. Okay, that's going to be the end of round six. We have one more round. This is going to be round seven. And before we finish round seven, we're going to just keep crocheting around, obviously. It should still just be a round of single crochets. However, when we get to the end of this round, we're going to be changing colors. We're going to change from black to our white. I do have different ways you can do our color changes to make a little bit cleaner of a stripe. If you're interested in learning how to do a perfect stripe method and you're a little bit more of an advanced crocheter, check it out. I'll put the link for where you can find that video tutorial here on screen right now. Um, you can also find it at clubcrochet.com slash stripe. But it essentially makes what we're doing right now, but with a very, very clean stripe. So you can't even tell where the um, where the rounds begin and end. It's really cool, actually. I like, I'm really proud of that tutorial. So if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. Okay, so we only have one more stitch left for the end of our round seven. But before we do that, we want to grab our off-white yarn and get it prepared because we're gonna be changing colors now to this new off-white. The best way to do that is get the next single crochet started. So start with a single crochet, but don't pull through yet with our yarn. Instead, place your new color in between the two loops on the hook and the one loop attached to the ball. Place it right here in between the two and hold it down with the index finger of your dominant hand like that. Now with your non-dominant index finger, place it in between the two colors, white and black there, and fold the white under the black so that the black yarn is twisted around the white. Now yarn over with the white yarn. So we're gonna yarn over with this white yarn and we're gonna pull that white yarn through the two loops on the hook. I'm gonna really scoop it just to make sure. And that's how you're going to change colors. Now we can just pull this black yarn tighter and into our first stitch of our next round, we're going to work in white and we're gonna make sure we work around this tail end of this black yarn, just so it doesn't come loose. You don't really need to do that, but it does make sure that just in case it doesn't come loose. Before we get that started though, let's fold our new color, or I mean our stitch marker over and uh, that will be the end of round seven. Okay, so for round eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, that's five rounds in a row five rounds total. We're going to do just single crochets around for each stitch all in our white yarn. So we're going to do five rounds of single crochets all in white. Um, for our first stitch of our of round eight here, I'm going to work around our tail end. But once I'm done with that, we can cut it nice and close. Apparently I need new scissors. There we go. <laughs> and we can keep track of where that black yarn is because after our five rounds, we're going to change back to our black yarn. But now we can just keep crocheting around in our white yarn. So just do five rounds of single crochets in white. Um, there should still be 24 stitches per round. And uh, that's, gonna, that's it. You just need to do five rounds of single crochets. This is actually a really nice break for the pattern. Um, after we do this and then switch back to black and do some more rounds of single crochets, uh, we can finally start shaping our face and our nose and stuff like that. But for now, we can just keep crocheting around in white for five rounds. And I'll be back in just a second once I finish those five rounds up. Okay, so I am at the end of round 12 and our five rounds of single crochets. I have one more stitch left. But before I finish that last stitch, we wanna change back to black uh, for our uh, for the remainder of our pattern. That's actually gonna be the only white stitches that we're going to need. So we wanna take our black yarn and we're gonna do exactly what we did for changing colors to our white yarn. We're gonna start a single crochet in white, 
Make sure there's two loops on the hook and one still attached, uh, the other end attached to the ball of yarn. We'll take our black yarn, place it over the two colors, or the two ends there, right in between the stitch. Hold it down with the index finger of your dominant hand, and then with your non-dominant index finger, place in between the two colors, and then flip under so that the yarn twists together, and then yarn over with the new color. In our case, it's black, and then pull it through the two loops on the hook to finish up that that final single crochet for round uh, 12. All right, so now we're on to round 13. Let's pull our stitch marker up. And for round 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, another five rounds, just single crochets again. So pretty easy, you know? Just do another five rounds of single crochets. However, this time we're gonna be working in black. Now for our first stitch, I am gonna work around our white yarn just for one stitch to keep it locked into place. We can cut our yarn here, and we won't need to use our white yarn again at all for this entire pattern. Um, you can use a little bit of your white yarn to add some texture to the eyes. However, uh, I probably won't be doing that. I'll be using our white felt for the eyes instead. But now for five more rounds, just single crochets into every stitch around, um, just this time we're using black yarn. So rounds 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Single crochets in every stitch around, 24 stitches for each round. And I'll go ahead and get those going, and I'll be back after five rounds of single crochets. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round 17, and our five rounds of single crochets in all black. Now we'll pull our stitch marker up, and now we're going to work on to round 18. And in round 18, we're gonna actually start to decrease our piece down. Um, we're gonna be doing a new stitch for you called an invisible decrease. Uh, this is gonna be a stitch that will help decrease it in. Um, we're basically making it go in this direction and then like this to make a little nose. So let's start by learning uh, for, for round 18, learning an invisible decrease. All right, so for round eight, we're gonna do three invisible decreases in a row and then we're going to do 12 single crochets and then another three invisible decreases to finish up the round. First off, let's learn an invisible decrease. For an invisible decrease, we wanna work under only the front loop of, of the next two stitches simultaneously. So normally we've been working under both of these loops like that. However, this time we only wanna work under the one closest to you, the front loop. Not only do we wanna work into this front loop, but we also wanted to work wanna work into the next front loop two. We want to work into two front loops at the same time and basically do a single crochet into those two front loops. So here's the easiest way I have found to do that. First, take your crochet hook and pointing from the bottom up, go up the stitch like that. That'll make sure you only get into the front loop. Once you're into the first front loop, spin your crochet hook around and get into position under the next stitch, just like how we did the first and go up through the next stitch. Now you'll be under two front loops at the same time. Now take your yarn attached to the ball, yarn over, and we're gonna do a single crochet under both of those front loops. The easiest way is to really do the scoop to get your first loop through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops for a regular single crochet. That's an invisible decrease, which is a very useful stitch for amigurumi. All right, so we want to do three of those invisible decreases in a row. So now let's do another invisible decrease in the next two stitches. That's going to be these two right there because, yeah, that's the next stitch. So next we're going to go right here and do a second invisible decrease. We go front loop, spin it around, get under, ready for the next front loop like that. Now we're under two front loops at the same time and do a single crochet. Yarn over and pull through those two front loops. Yarn over and pull through two. There's two invisible decreases. Now let's do a third one. Front loop into the next stitch. Spin around. Here's the next front loop. Yarn over and pull through those two front loops. Going over the stitch, yarn over again and pull through two again. There we go. That's gonna be three invisible decreases in a row. So one, two, three invisible decreases. Now we wanna do 12 more single crochets to get to our, to get towards the end, and then we're gonna do three more at the end of this round. Three more invisible decreases, I mean. So 12 more single crochets, 
And now we're working into both loops again for these 12 single crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, let's go seven and eight. We'll get a little bit more yarn. Nine, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, now for these last stitches here, there should be, I think, six more stitches, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. You wanna do three more invisible decreases till we get to the end of the round. Round. So we're gonna go do a next stitch, is gonna be invisible decrease. We'll go front loop, flip over, get into the next front loop right here, and do another single crochet. So there's one, here's the next one, front loop, front loop, single crochet. Last one, front loop, front loop, and then a single crochet. That will be the end of round 18. For the end of round 18, you should have 18 stitches around actually. So that's kind of nice. You should have exactly 18 stitches for round 18. That's kind of cool. All right, let's pull our loop out now because now we want to add the eyes and we want to stuff it just a little bit, just a little bit. So first up, let's add our eyes. Okay, now before I actually add our eyes, I am gonna show you how to add the white around the back of the eye and then add our eye. It's important, okay? So you'll see, you'll see what I mean. So first off, we're going to need our white felt. We only need a little bit of white felt. Like this is even way more than we're going to need. Then we're going to need our eyes. I'm using eight millimeter eyes for this video. So you need two eight millimeter eyes. Okay, and then there's our backs of our eyes that we're gonna to use to lock them into place. Okay, now we're going to cut two little circles that are just bigger than these eyes. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go about like that big. It's kind of like, kind of just eye it. I like that big's fine. I'm just gonna create a little rectangle. And then from that rectangle, I'm gonna cut that into a little tiny square like that. It's nice to have sharp, uh, sharp scissors for this. Okay, once you make that little tiny square that is about the size of that eye, maybe a little bit bigger. See how it's just a little bit bigger than the eye? After you do that, you want to create uh, cr cut this into a little circle. The reason I did a square is because it's easiest for me to do a circle after that because I just cut off the corners basically. So I'm just going to cut the corners off, kind of round out each of these corners. It, this does not have to be perfect. You can always fix this later as well. In fact, we might end up having to do that in a little bit anyhow. But yeah, we're just basically cutting into a little itty bitty circle. Hey, that's pretty good. That is, that's a pretty good circle. All right, that's one of the better circles for me. Okay, now we wanna make another one of these little circles. And if you wanna make sure that circle is exactly the same size, just hold it over the rest of your felt, the little bit of felt that you have, and then just cut around that circle. And we'll do our best to mimic it. It does not have to be exact. Almost there. And There you go, let's see. Oh, it's slightly smaller, but it'll work. It'll work. Let's cut, let's just cut a little bit because it's kind of like ovular right now. So let's just cut this end a little bit to, there we go. Just round it out just a little bit. Okay, now you have two little tiny circles. Unfortunately, one is slightly smaller than the other, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to cut a little tiny X into the circle on just slightly off center. So we don't want it directly in the center, but just off center about right here, you want to cut a little X. Um, you can also just use a needle to poke a hole in it if you'd like, but I find it's easiest to actually just use my scissors, especially because I have really sharp tips of my scissor. Just take the tip of my scissor right there. Try not to cut yourself, obviously. Just get through there, 
and we're just cutting a little hole. Essentially what we're doing is we're trying to make a little hole that's big enough to fit the back of our eye into. So I do that, and then I'm just gonna cut up it, and then down. Okay, that should be pretty good. Now I'm gonna take, actually, let's see if we can do my crochet hook. I've never done this way before, but no, let's do the needle. So I'm gonna take my needle, go through that little hole that I cut, and I'm just gonna twist the end here to make that hole a little bit bigger. Once you have a little hole, we're gonna take the eye, place it right where that hole is, and then kind of just twist the eye until it's on it. And we'll just kind of tweak it onto the eye like that. And that'll create a little bit of white around the outside of the eye when we add it onto the face. All right, and I'll go ahead and do that to this one as well. This one's really tiny, so I might need to end up cutting, recutting it but let's see what we can do. Let's see if I can just get, there we go. And I'm basically just all right. Now we're going to take the other eye, place it right where that one is and just kind of twist this white felt onto the eye. I'm going to kind of pry it on there. And yeah, pretty good. Yeah, this, this white one is just a little bit too small. Like, I kind of wish it was a little bit bigger, but that's okay. It's not, it's not that bad. I'm just being picky. Okay. All right, now we need to actually add these eyes into the face. So the eyes go specifically into uh, between rounds 14 and 15, about 10 to 11 stitches apart. I found 11, I think, was better. So what I like to do is we can count up from the bottom. It's actually really nice that we have the stitch marker all the way up because it helps us count our, stitch, our rounds a little bit. So we got one, round uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then... 13, and so 14 and 15. So this is going to be rounds 14 and 15. It's going to actually be right here. So rounds 14 and 15 are about 10 to 15 stitches apart. So let's go with one about right here, maybe. Like that. Actually, maybe a little up higher. Let's try like right there for one. And then across from it. And then if we have the right placement, I'll tell you exactly the stitch count. Once we get the right placement, we're going to just place the eye into that stitch. See how the eye is like that there. And then 10 to 15, 10 to 11 stitches away. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I think that stitch right there seems about right. See, that's kind of, that seems about right to me. Now specifically, it looks like this is going to be, let me count the stitches really quick and I can tell you exactly the stitch count if you're having a hard time finding out which stitch to use. That's going to be stitch number, in round 14, it's going to be stitch number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so in stitch number 6 and then 9, 10, 11, 12. 14, 15, 16, 17. So around six, uh, stitch six and 17 looks like exactly where I'm putting the eyes. That's what it looks like on that side, and that's what it looks like on this side. And you can see how it's gonna go in like this. So this is gonna be the bottom where the end of the round is. Okay, once you have the eyes in place, we're gonna take these little locking mechanisms and place it right over that little eye there. And then I just like to pop them into place. Oopsies, if I can get it right, there we go. And then just, there we go, popped right into place. Oh, that's such a satisfying sound too. Satisfying sound, that sounds like a good band name. Now let's do this one right here. That's pretty good. All right. And that's going to be how to add the eyes. Now, if you want to do an alternative 
way to add the white around the eyes. Um, Ohana Crafts uses white yarn threaded around the outside of the eye. So you actually just come out from where the stitch is, like this, except for up one to where the eye actually is, with white yarn, and then just around it, and then go in with the white yarn, and then you double knot on the inside. And that's another alternate way to add uh, white around the outside of the eyes. If you want a tutorial where I show a few different ways you can customize eyes, I'll put a link up here and in the description to this, uh, to this video I made where I show uh, five different ways you can customize your safety eyes, uh, this being one of them, what we just did. Okay, once we have our eyes done, now we want to stuff our piece slightly. Um, we don't need to stuff it up much. I'm going to use a little bit of regular stuffing, and then I'm also going to use some of these extra threads that I have from this pattern and one of the other videos that I was just recording. And I'm also going to use the little cuts from our eyes as stuffing as well so that there's just no waste at all. I'm just gonna place it right in there, just stuff it into the back. Let's do a little bit more stuffing, just a little bit. We're gonna stuff it again after a few more rounds. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, let's continue crocheting around. We are on to round 19 now. Let's get our crochet hook in place. All right, and let's pull our stitch marker up, of course, which I accidentally stuffed in there, but that's okay. There we go. Fold it over. All right, so for round 19, nice and easy, we're just going to do all single crochets around. So just one round of all single crocheting uh, around for round 19. Now there should be 18 stitches around, so just 18 single crochets all the way around to get to the end of the round. So round 19's a nice little break, especially after doing the face and stuff. Yeah, it's just a nice, just a nice, simple round of just single crochets all the way around. All right, coming to the end here. A couple more stitches. Back around the eye. And there we go. Okay. That'll be the end of round 19. Let's get more yarn and pull our stitch marker up. Now we're on to round 20. For round 20, we're gonna decrease it down from 18 back down to 12 stitches around. To do that, we're gonna do a single crochet into our first stitch, and then we're gonna do an invisible decrease into our next stitch. And then we're gonna repeat that process of doing a single crochet and then an invisible decrease six times total. So six repeats of that all the way around. So that means single crochet into the next stitch here, one single crochet, and then one invisible decrease. We're gonna go front loop, front loop, like that, and then single crochet into those front loops for that invisible decrease, just like we did in uh, round 18. Okay, so again, that's gonna be one single crochet, one invisible decrease, six times around. Let's do our second repeat, one single crochet, and then one invisible decrease. Here's our third repeat, single crochet, invisible decrease. Here's our fourth repeat, single crochet and an invisible decrease. Single crochet, invisible decrease. Let's get a little bit more yarn and do one more of those repeats. Single crochet one and then invisible decrease, front loop and front loop. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round 20. Now before I continue to round 21, we're gonna go ahead and stuff our piece just a bit more. In the, in the written pattern, it says stuff mostly. So you're gonna have one more opportunity to stuff our piece up, but um, when we do get to that round or that end where we're going to stuff it up, uh, it's going to be pretty hard to stuff. So it's easiest to stuff it mostly right now. That way it just, it just makes our life a little bit easier later on. Now you don't want to stuff it too much where you can see the stuffing through your stitches. So just make sure that you don't overstuff. 
That's just really important regardless of what you're making, but especially when you're making something with black yarn, you don't want to overstuff it. So see, it's just got a little bit of stuff in there because the more you stuff it, the more you're going to see your stuffing through your stitches, which is going to be a problem. All right. That's, that seems mostly stuffed. I suppose I could stuff it just a little bit more, just a little bit. Okay. All right. Let's get our crochet hook back in there. Pull our stitch marker up. And now we're on to round 21. For rounds 21, 22, and 23, three rounds in a row, just single crochets all the way around. Just three more rounds of just single crochets. Nice break again. So just single crochets around. There should be 12 stitches, 12 single crochets per round. And you can see how it's getting too hard to get my finger into the piece as I crochet around. So I actually just pinch my piece like this to get a better position to the stitches. See, and so I'm pinching it, getting a better position into my stitches. We just want three rounds of single crochets for 12 stitches per round. So it's not gonna be too crazy. Here's my plea again. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe down below. It really helps the channel. And check out more of our endangered creatures after this one if you're done, if you like this pattern. Or share this pattern in uh, any kind of crochet groups that you're part of or with our designers. Make sure to tag them. Hashtag, use hashtag club crochet. Stuff like that. All right, so now I'm on to round 22 now. I'm gonna go ahead and finish our two more rounds of single crochets and we'll continue on to our very last round of this project before we need to sew everything on. Okay, just about at the end of round 23 here. Just one more stitch right here. Boop, there we go. All right, and you can see how that nose is coming together now. All right. So now we're on to our very last round of our entire piece of crocheting, uh, round 24. Now I'm not gonna pull my stitch marker up because we're gonna end up pulling our stitch marker out after this round. But for round 24, we want to, want to do an invisible decrease into every stitch all the way around. That's gonna be six invisible decreases total. So one invisible decrease per, per uh, two stitches. So again, that's gonna be for an invisible decrease, front loop, front loop, single crochet. So there's one, we want six of those. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's two, front loop, front loop, and single crochet. That's gonna be our third, single crochet. There's our fourth, two more, front loop and front loop single crochet. Now one more front loop, front loop, single crochet will be six single crochets around. Now if you want to count the top of your stitches, you should have six around. To finish up our uh, body here, we want to cut the yarn. You don't need a very long end. We're just going to sew this all the way closed. We're just going to pull it all the way through like that. And now we want to stuff it up a little bit. You see how this front doesn't have much stuffing so we want to add a little bit more stuffing just into the to the face there we want to stuff it fully because this is going to be our last chance to stuff it before we need to sew it closed and i'm going to use the back of my crochet hook to take this stuffing and and work it into there i like using the back of my crochet hooks because they i have like this nice rubber crochet hook which makes it a lot easier if you're having uh if you don't have a rubber crochet hook like this or you're having some trouble stuffing your piece up. Um, a couple of tips. First off, try not to stuff it with so much stuffing at once, you goof. That's that's a comment to myself, not to you. <laughs> the second tip that I have, uh, so first tip is don't stuff a lot in at one time because it just makes it really difficult. Um, the second tip is if you don't have a crochet hook like this, a good tip is to use a stick like this. This actually, um, these actually come in bags of stuffing. So it's kind of a nice little addition that comes in stuffing. It's kind of like, I don't know, just a nice stick. Um, chopsticks also work really well. Pencils work really, really well because of the eraser on the back of the pencil helps to grip the yarn. Um, I mean the stuffing. So yeah, those are some of my tips for 
stuffing your piece up. Okay, just a little bit more stuffing. Let's feel our piece. I'm gonna go ahead and wiggle that stuffing around, loosen it up a little bit. And yeah, I think actually, that's it. that feels pretty good. All right, so next thing that we wanna do is we wanna sew this closed. We're gonna go ahead and put this onto our needle, put this end on our needle, and we're gonna sew it closed. To sew a piece closed, all you have to do is take your needle with your end of your yarn on it and go through the front loops only of all the stitches around. So I'm gonna go only in this front loop of all of the stitches around in a circle. There should be six stitches total. So there's one, two, three, four, right? Yeah, four. This will be five, and then one more right you right there will be six. Once you've gone through all those front loops, you can hold right at the tip right there and pull it tight, which will close it up. See how it just closed it right up? Now you can take the end of your needle, go straight through the center, and just anywhere, really anywhere on the outside like that. Pull it somewhat tight. Go ahead and pinch this a little bit so that it's more of a little nose. We'll kind of shape it a little bit. This is one of the reasons why I really like cotton yarn is it's very shapeable. And then we can cut the end nice and close, just like that. Last thing that we can do before we sew on the body is we can just pull our stitch markers out, all of these stitch markers out. So I just like using a needle, just pulling them out. Either You can either go one at a time like this, or you can go a couple of rounds up like right here. And then once you're near the top, pull it all the way out. Okay. So we got our body made and see how I'm like kind of making sure it like bends the direction that we want it to. Now, after we've made our body, we just need to sew on all of our various pieces. Essentially, we need to assemble our, our um, taper together. So I have a bunch of little ends here. We've got our back legs. We've got our ears and our front legs. Let's start with the ears because I think that they're the easiest. We're gonna sew these just above the eyes, just a couple of rounds above the eyes. There's gonna be two ends on these ears. There's gonna be one end coming out of more of the center of the ear and then the other end coming out of slightly over to the side of it. The way I like to sew the ears on is I thread the center one on to our needle first and into the side where the tail end isn't coming out, into this side here, you wanna come out, you can either come out through the back of it like this, or you can go through the front of top of it like that. Either way works. Let's try it through the back of it. And now you have these two ends coming out of two different sides of the ears. Now what we can do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna sew it onto the head right here, just above the eye. Two stitches, there are two ends going into two, two different spots and then coming out of a stitch. So we're going to go just a couple of rounds above the eyes about, let's go like, let's see, for this one I did, yeah, just a couple of rounds above the eyes. So we're going to go one, two, maybe like, is that too, that might be too low. Maybe like right there. Right there. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, so we're going to go right here above the eye. And I'm just gonna come out a couple of stitches over and we're gonna take the other tail end, thread that one on a needle as well. Go in through a stitch adjacent right here. I like to make it down a little bit closer to the eye so that it kind of is tilted outwards more like that. And then once you have the second end in there, come out through where you came out with the first end, just like that. And we can just pull both of these ends relatively tight. You don't want to overdo it, but you do want it to be, you know, you don't want the ear coming off. And then we can just double knot it right here and really pull that first knot tight. Don't pull it so tight that it breaks the yarn, but you want to pull it tight enough so that it pulls into the stitch a bit. And then double knot it. 
then we could just cut it nice and close like that. You can either just squish your piece so that the knot gets hidden in there, but if the knot doesn't hide in there that well, just use the back of your needle to help get your stitch in there. All right, so there's one ear made, and I like kind of, I kind of like how it's a little wiggly too. Let's go ahead and do the other ear on the opposite side, just above the other eye. We're going to start by threading our inside stitch or inside uh yarn first. Let's go th out through the bottom like that. And this one's going to be sewn on above this eye but angled this way instead of angled out like that. And we'll go let's go right here. Go up a few stitches. And then with the other tail end threaded on, we'll go one stitch up right here and then out through the same spot like that. Pull nice and tight and nice and tight. Yeah, that's pretty cute. That's pretty cute if you ask me. And then we could just double knot these on the inside. There's one nice tight knot and two. And we can cut the yarn relatively close about right there and get that knot hidden back into our piece okay so that's going to be how to sew on the ears next up we want to sew the front legs on and the front legs actually just go directly under the eyes like right here and right here now the important thing is that there's a little bit of an angle to it so if you look at it right here you can see how it's kind of angled like this you know, it's not straight, it's kind of angled like that. That angle should go with the uh, angle of the body. So it should be angled in like this or angled out like this. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take our middle of our leg and thread that onto a needle. Then we find the placement of the leg. Let's go like right, we'll go like right here. That looks pretty good, actually. Right there. Find where the center of that placement is. It's going to be like right here. Right? Yeah. About like right there. And come out. Uh, let's go like a few stitches over. We're going to go into the white section here. Okay. That'll keep our leg a little bit in place there. So that we can sew this end. Use this end to sew on the leg. So we're going to thread that onto our needle. And we're going to use this to pull it a little tighter and get our piece into place. And let's actually just start right here where the end of the round is. And we'll go up through the next stitch over right here. Once you can get it started, it can be kind of easy. You'll just hold it into place and come out of a stitch and then in through the top of the next stitch on the leg. In through the same stitch you came out of. And then out through... The next stitch along the um, the body. Actually, we're gonna go down right here. Let's see what that looks like. This is a lot of trial and error. Um, if you don't like where it's getting sewn on, you and you need to take it out, put it back in, stuff like that. Like that and like this. Once I have like three stitches sewn on, that looks good. Like three stitches. I can count my stitches back from the beginning to find out exactly what stitches to work into. So if we look at where we started, that's going to be right here. And where we're coming out, that's going to be right here. We want to find all the stitches that we need to go from there to here and make it work with the stitches on our body. So this one that's coming out of is going to come into this next stitch on the leg. And that's going to be one, two, three, four, five so we have five stitches that we need to use one's going to be right here one's going to be the one where the tail ends coming out of so there's three in between those that need to make them work so we go one let's go one two three four maybe one two three four five that looks pretty good one so that's one two three four five okay so we're going up we go in through the next stitch on the body, in or in on the leg, in through the next stitch on the body, and out through the next stitch on the body. 
Before I continue doing that, let's stuff the leg just a little bit. Right at the end here, when you only have a few stitches left, you need to take just a small amount of stuffing and stuff our leg up. Because once you have it sewn on, you can't stuff it anymore. Okay. There we go. And then we're gonna go through the next stitch on the body or in the leg, next stitch, on, same stitch on the body, next stitch on the body. There should only be one, two, three, one, two, three. Perfect. We are on track. Leg, body, body. The last stitch that you should be working out of should be the first stitch that you worked into when you're sewing things together. So that's gonna be right here. And then you go around that last slip stitch you made into the body, then out through where you came out with the other end so you have something to double knot to. And we can pull it nice and tight, pull that knot in there, and we'll look at how that's sewn on. I love it. That's exactly how we want it to be sewn on. All right, so we'll go ahead and double knot these two. One. And two. Cut it nice and close. Like that. And then just squish. And then if you still see a little bit of black coming through, you just want to stuff it in there, hide it in there, just like that. All right. Now we want to do a nether leg on this side, and then I'll do my back legs. So the next leg is going to go right here. Um, the leg should be about, the front leg should be about one stitch apart from each other. So that's going to be like right, like, like maybe like right this. Yeah, about like that. You see, so you want it to be one stitch apart on the bottom. See how there's only one stitch? If we sewed it on directly like this, there'd be one stitch right here between the two. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sew this leg on, and I'll be back in just a second to sew on the back legs really quick. Um, we're going to put our center of, our, of it right here, and then work around it. Okay, so that's our second front leg sewn on. You see how it looks? That's pretty good. I like it. I am a fan of that. Oh, but he's kind of tilted up. Let's sew, let's go ahead and sew his back legs on then so he can stand upright. So the back legs are gonna go, obviously, closer to the back here. The back legs are gonna go between uh, rounds five to seven, about two stitches apart from each other. So it's gonna be slightly further apart than the front legs. So kind of like, maybe kind of like that. Yeah, about like that. See how there's two stitches, oopsies. If I held it right here and right there, about right there and right there, we're gonna have one, two apart. That looks pretty good. So like there's two stitches between them. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this one on first and then I'll work on to that one. And for the first one, let's go ahead and make sure that it's kind of lined up with that first leg, maybe a little bit further back, about right there. We'll go ahead and go right where this round changes over thread the middle of our piece first. And there's gonna be eight stitches to work with on the back legs. So we're gonna have a little bit more stitches to find, uh, to find places for on this body. Let's go ahead and thread our other end. We're gonna use this end to sew it on. Let's go ahead and just place it where we want it first. Looks pretty good. Eh, maybe a little bit closer in like that. Eh, that's pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna start right here, one, and go up here. So we're just gonna we're just gonna make a decision, and then we're gonna work with that decision that we made. One, two, and then into the same stitch on the body, out through the next stitch on the body. Actually, do we wanna go up to here? No, we wanna go right here. Yeah, because we want it to be a little bit further separated. Right, right, right. Okay, so there's one. Let's go next stitch on the legs into the body. Whoop. Out of the next stitch on the body. 
like that. Cool. Dope. All right. How many more stitches we got to work into? We got one, two, three, four, five, six stitches to work with. Coming out here, we need to finish right there. So we need six stitches in between. So that's one. Let's go one, two. Uh, I think I want it in more. So I think I want one, two. Is that too far in though? Perhaps. Let's go the other way around. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that works. Okay. So in through this next one, into the body, up through the next stitch. In through the next one on the leg, in through the body, up through the next stitch. Let's make sure we got one, two, three, four. We'll go one, two, three, four. Perfect. That, that'll totally work. Okay. We got four stitches left. Let's go ahead and stuff our back leg just a little bit seriously you don't want to you don't need to stuff it very much even at all just about that's pretty good and we'll go one right yeah this stitch body next stitch body there's one two two and then we'll have the one last one. And then we can double knot it with the other end and sew on the next leg. So one, two, two. So I'm coming out through, through where I started. Don't forget that. And come out through where our other tail end is for it to have something to sew onto, like so. That's a pretty good back leg. Oh, I like it. He's actually standing up with only three, which is good sign. Very good sign. All right. We'll double knot it here. One, two. And cut it nice and close. You can squish it and just kind of poke that knot back in there. All right, so we got one of the back legs sewn on. We got one more back leg to work with. We're gonna go right here so that there's two stitches in between. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew this back leg on. And we get when I come back, we'll sew on the tongue and then we'll add a little butt on the back. All right. Okay, so I have just finished sewing on our last leg. There we go. There we go, and standing upright, looks great. Next up, let's sew on the tongue, and actually the tongue is really easy to sew on. Um, all you need to do is, you're gonna have two ends here, and we're gonna go ahead and just sew it on just under the mouth, like right, or under the nose, like right there, right under the schnoz. All right, so what we wanna do is, we wanna thread one of these two ends, and then place our mouth where we think we want it to be, yeah, about like right there looks pretty good. And we'll put one end through here and then the other one two stitches away. So there's one, two, three. So there's where the other end's gonna come out. And we wanna have this come out through just, just close to it, just a few stitches away. And then the other end come one, two over, out through the very bottom. We'll thread that onto our needle like this into the bottom. And then we wanna pull these really nice and tight so that those knots get pulled onto the inside of the piece. Okay, like that. And then we'll just double knot these two on the inside. One and two. Nice and tight, cut it close. Go ahead and give it a squish. Hide that little knot in there. And da 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 da, tongue sewn on. Oh my gosh, this thing is so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. All right, last thing that we want to do is add our tail. So we need um, a little bit more of our off white color. Okay, so we just need a little bit more of this. Like, really, that's it. We just need a bit just to sew it on. And we can thread this on our needle. And essentially what we're doing is we're just sewing on a little X 
on his butt right here. So the best way I found to do this is let's go out through a few stitches over like right here and you want to come out just above the very center. Okay, then we're going to go across down to here and then up just up to let's go like up to like right here. Like that. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. And then go back across over to this end to just make a little X. Like that. We're going to come out where our other tail end is. Like so. And we're going to just double knot these on the inside to keep it close. So there's one and Two. We'll cut it nice and close and use the end of our needle to just stuff it, the knot back in there. Go ahead and tweak it a little bit more. I love this addition that Ohana Crafts did. That's I love the little butthole. It's funny. It's so funny. All right. And there we go. We have our crocheted taper. Let's go ahead and get all these little little uh, stuffed pieces off of it and clean our workspace. There we go. Thank you so, so much for crocheting this Malayan taper along with me and supporting this fundraiser. If you haven't yet, please make sure to like and subscribe down below and check out all the other patterns and designers in this year's Earth Day collection, especially this patterns designer at Ohana Crafts. Thank you so much again for watching. Pasta La Pizza and Happy Hookin'. Let's see, what would a taper sound like? Like, maybe like that? That's not bad. <laughs>